Hello everyone, welcome to Knit Night with Mika Mika. I am your host, Shamika Clark, telling you all about my knitting journey from Brooklyn, New York. I would like to get started by letting you know where you can reach me. When I'm not on my YouTube channel, which is Mika Mika Shop, you can also find me on Instagram underneath Mika Mika Shop. You can find me on Etsy as Mika Mika, and you can send me an email, Mika Mika Shop at gmail.com, or you can find the Ravelry group Knit Night with Mika Mika. And um, that's a lot, there's a lot of fun going on there. Um, I encourage you to join the introductions and say who you are, where you're from. Let me know what's going on in your part of town, your neck of the woods, or your area of the world. <laughs> um, I'd like to start off by going through the intros. Um, recently, we've had a few more people join and say hello. So I'd like to say hello to those people. Um, the first person is Willie from Philly. Uh, she's a friend of mine that I ran into with Rhinebeck two years, in a, two years, no, one year ago, and then this year I actually missed her. Um, but we've been in connection since then. She actually won the uh, stitch marker giveaway that I had on Instagram, congratulations. And um, she, um, with that win, I was able to send a second set of stitch markers to a friend of hers. So there you go. So you never know what you're going to win. Um, she is uh, venturing into knitting sweaters and she loves yarn from Miss Babs. And maybe I may have had something to do with that because I've been talking about Miss Babs for so long. But uh, enabling is like one of the things that I just love to do. <laughs> So uh, the next introduction would be Caroline from Pembrokeshire, Wales, who lives in uh, West Strait, Orkney, which is the Orkney Islands in Scotland. Caroline, we need to talk because I will be making a trip to Edinburgh and um, I'd love to hear, um, are you going to be there? Um, would you like to meet up? Um, what is there to do in Scotland that I need to put on my list of things to do? Um, when I'm not knitting in the festival, you know, I got a few days. Um, let's see. So, uh, Caroline loves Fair Isle, color work, and all things woolly. And uh, she's a lovely addition to the Mika Mika podcast uh, international knitting community. I love it. Um, the next person we have that um, said hello was Robert. Um, he's Father Fiber from Texas. He loves to knit for his kids and his family while watching video casts. Well, Robert, I'll be sure to keep recording more so that you have more to watch. Uh, we also have Tahira from Brooklyn, who has a sock yarn buying problem. Tahira, so do I. Um, <laughs> does anyone else? Uh, maybe we can organize a mini skein, mini skein swap. Um, that's something that I have in mind for the future. Well, let's see what we can do. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that. Uh, we also have Megan from New Zealand, who's been knitting for babies for quite a while. She's a superstar at that. Another person we have is Verena from Cologne, Germany. Um, she actually won two consecutive stitch marker giveaways um, that I had on Instagram. If you didn't know, I do a giveaway for every 100 followers. Um, so whatever uh, stitch marker that I have that's current at the time, I'll just do a giveaway for that. So um, she's totally randomly, she's won two in a row. And um, what does it say here? She said that her hubby, her hubby has no problem letting her buy more yarn. Um, where do they make men like that? Because I need one. Send him over here. See if he has a friend or family, something. Like, yeah, because I need someone to not have a problem with me buying yarn. Because, I mean, the problem is mine, but it doesn't have to be theirs, right? So anyway, <laughs> the next person who joined... Uh, the group is uh, Sherry from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, she's been following my Instagram and she's happy about my podcast. So I'm so happy you checked me out, thank you. And uh, her new uh, sock that she wants to make is Vanilla's The New Black. And she loves hearing about knit alongs and VCAN. So maybe we can do a VCAN coming up soon. Let's, I'm gonna see if I could try to figure out a way to get that into the schedule um, if anyone else is interested. Um, then uh, the next person is Shantae from Harlem. Now, I met Shantae in the beginning stages of my knitting when I went to uh, Fashion Institute of Technology to learn how to teach people to knit. And she was in class with me. And then we also went to various Harlem knit up, meeting knit ups, knitting meetups. <laughs> 
and uh, we just have so much history together. Um, she was my first uh, sewing, like she helped me with my first sewing experience. Um, and she's also one of those people who was part of the No Sleep Till Rhinebeck crew and will knit the sweater the week of and not sleep just like me. Like we're two peas in a pod, what can I say? Uh, she's a speed knitter on socks. Um, hi Shantae, it's so nice to, thank you for joining the group. Um, so we also have Diane in London who has the Mrs. You Makes podcast. So I checked out a little bit of her podcast. I have to listen to some more so I can get more acquainted with her. Um, but we have some of the similar interests. We make jewelry and she loves baking and she's always posting recipes and she has three boys and a baby girl. So hi, Diane. Um, Melba from Missouri. She said she loves my creativity and my enabling. Well, there will be a lot more enabling because I find great stuff and I just can't shut up about it. So Melba, um, I'll be happy to help you uh, get some more stuff for your creative habits. <laughs> and the last person that introduced themselves is Donna from North Carolina. She is a woman after my own heart. Uh, she knits and she listens to science fiction audiobooks with a pot of loose leaf tea, which I love, or wine, <laughs> which I love again. Uh, she loves Fair Isle, and let me explain something to you. Wine does not get in the way of color work, okay? No, it doesn't. So uh, Donna, thank you for joining and introducing yourself. Uh, speaking of tea, <laughs> let's get on that topic. Um, I had the pleasure of buying the David's Tea 24 Days of Tea. <sighs> it smells so good. Even through the box, it smells good. I'm gonna just open it up really quick to show you. I hope this isn't, doesn't get blown out. Um, there's a cute little, oh man, let's see if I can fix this so that it, I don't know, but uh, yeah, there's a box of tea for every day of the month um, for 24 days leading up to Christmas. So I had three teas already for uh, this week. Um, the first tea was Snow Day, which was really good. It was like a pepperminty, cocoa-y kind of tea. The second one was Jumpy Monkey, which um, it says it's Yerba Mate tea and it has white chocolate in it and coffee beans. So although I wasn't jumpy jumpy drinking it, I was able to sleep afterwards, but it did not taste good because I do like coffee and then the white chocolate, I'm like a white chocolate mocha person, so it was really good for me. The last one I had was, uh, what's the name of it? Something with a G. Gen Matcha green tea with rice, popped rice kernels or something in there. I didn't like it too much. I really enjoy green tea with jasmine. So I was kind of like waiting for the jasmine flavor, but it didn't quite show itself because it wasn't in there. I was just kind of hoping, waiting and wishing, but didn't happen so um two out of three for the first three days um so I'm still happy that I bought it and I'm um, gonna keep drinking it for the rest of uh, up until Christmas and for Christmas Day um, I've been collecting Santa's secret which is a black tea with peppermint and there's little candy cane sprinkles in the actual tea it's so delicious so I have about four ounces already and I ordered another four ounces when David's Tea had a sale uh, thanks to Sarah the Canadian knitter who put this thing out on Instagram and I wasn't going to spend money on Cyber Monday but Sarah you made me spend it it's your fault but I love you anyway um, so that's me and my tea obsession aside from knitting so uh, let's keep going on um, I want to let you know about my whips and knit alongs that I have joined Okay, so on the subject of advent calendars, there has been, so I just showed you the teas. I joined a mini skein advent calendar um, run by Sarah, the Canadian knitter. Um, and the problem is I don't really have mini skeins because I've been making this baby blanket and I'm so petrified of cutting it at the wrong length and running out of yarn that I just do it straight from the skein. So um, I've been seeing everyone open up a surprise package and get a new color and adding it to their blanket and I'm getting a little jealous because I'm like, I don't have that 
element of surprise going on. So what I have done is I made a stitch marker advent calendar. I know it's all pink. Um, <laughs> so this is just an old um, Victoria's Secret box from some fragrance that I had from a while back. So uh, yeah, so I put all of the all of the uh, stitch markers in little baggies. This will be number eight. The light's blowing it out, but um, yeah, so I really, I just randomly put them in there and I can't really see what they are, really, because I'm not like really, really looking at it really close, but every day that I complete a square for the mini skein blanket for the knit along, I am adding a stitch marker so that I know which squares were the ones that were part of the knit along. So without further ado, here is the blanket. Um, I guess we've moved on to whips now, so might as well do it. Um, so this is the beautiful blanket for my friend, my friend's baby that is already born and I said I'm a bad, bad auntie because I didn't give her the blanket yet but I am making good progress, I'm working on it. So the first day I worked on this and the blanket is, uh, the stitch marker is like a tree of life stitch marker and then day two was uh, this color, wait, this color was uh, Knit Picks Stroll Tonal Seashell and then this color is Cascade Iris Mix, Cascade Heritage and it's like a little mirror stitch marker and then I have this is Cascade Heritage in Roses and it's like a little Christmas tree stitch marker I don't know if like it's focusing enough but yeah so then day four is what I completed today it's uh, a pair of mittens uh, maybe you can see it hopefully and um, so that's what I'm working on. So I really want to finish this by Christmas. So in order to do that, I have to do three uh, squares a day. So aside from the one for each day, I have to start a new, at the other edge, I have to start a new line going across. So by the time I get to this square, I'll have another row at the top and then I can add and then finish this side of the blanket. I know it might not make sense, but I did uh, draw out a schematic and I took a picture of it and I'm using it as a guide to check off what square is next because although this is supposed to be a random thing, I'm a little bit OCD about it because I want things to look a certain way and I want it to be done on time for the baby. So, uh, well, at least for Christmas. <laughs> so um, I just set up this, this little picture of how I want it to look and the order in which it should happen. So I will be inserting it here. You can take a look. And um, how that came to be, I was at work one day and I had the blanket on my mind and I just started drawing squares. And then all of a sudden I have a blanket motif. So my mind just doesn't stop with the color coordination and all of that. It's just roller coaster going on in there when it comes to knitting. So, um, but yeah, it's cool. Um, another, oh, another work in progress. I had mentioned this in the last month's, sorry, in my last podcast, and it is a pair of socks. <sighs> so the last time I was at this little blue part, and now I didn't get that far. This is one one train ride home from work. Um, I didn't quite get so far because, man, people are just so gross on the train. Like, they sit with their legs wide open, their arms are like this, and I'm like, if my needles were bigger, I'd poke you. No, 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 I really wouldn't. But, you know, the thought does cross my mind. New York City can get very annoying at times. Um, so I have just been like, all right, I'll just 
listen to my headphones and like just wait until I get home to knit. But then when I get home, I'm focusing on other projects. So this has been kind of uh, neglected this week, but I'm going to work on it. So get that out of the way. Um, so those are my whips. Um, what else do I want to talk about? What are the knit along? Okay, so all of these whips are part of are going to be a part of the knit along called the pigskin party and during this month up until the last day of the year i have to finish certain whips to get extra points so this i had casted on in august so this has to get done that blanket got casted on i think in may um so yeah it has to get done so those are my two main priorities right 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 now um there's also uh, another knit along that I am in that is called the Box of Socks Cow and that's run by Kristen of Will and Vine Yarns and of the Yarn Guys and Podcast. So the last time I checked I had seven socks that are complete. So these socks will be eight and then nine and ten. I have already cast it on that just have to be completed. Nine and 10 will be the mystery socks from the uh, Socktober designed by uh, Anne from the Carolina Fiber Girls. Um, I still, I didn't do anything to it since last time so it's not really like anything exciting to show but these will become finished socks. I just have to get it done. And I also have the socks that I casted on for my birthday. And it's past the heel. I just have to keep continuing on with it. And then I will start the next pair, the next side. So within the next two weeks, hopefully I'll get some of these out. And that is going to leave me with two more socks that I'm going to have to cast on. Um... And I figured that since it is uh, Will and Vine's uh, knit along, it would be clever, a clever idea, to use her yarn. And I will call this a classic yarn because this is oh, from, I think, the second year that she was dyeing yarn. I call it a classic because I'm not even sure if she's still dyeing this color up anymore. She probably will because it's very popular. It sold out the first time and I was like, really sad that I didn't buy it the first year so second year I jumped on it it's called Holly Jolly and this is the tag it's on her blitzed base and of course you can't see anything because this light is like ridiculous let me get that out of your way so you could no you still can't see anything that's crazy sorry um I've been told that the lighting was really dark in my last video, so I think I'm kind of like overkill right now. But as long as you can see me, right? <laughs> I am no way, no shape or form a lighting specialist. I have a really good friend who is, and he's offered to help me. Um, however, he's busy tonight, so I needed to get this podcast out. So but you're just going to get shine and brightness, and you're going to get Broadway right now, right? Come on along, I'll take you to the lullaby of Broadway. Yeah, that's what you're getting right now. So anyway, um, so yes, so this yarn, Blitz color work, the color is Holly Jolly. I'm probably going to do vanilla socks with it. And that will be sock number 11. Sock number 12, I'm going to sneak into my, I'm all over the place today. I really apologize. I'm going to sneak into my uh, acquisitions just to show you what's going on with sock number 12 because it's all related. So I found Haverland um, Frankensocks. I found the Haverland Etsy shop. There's a Frankensocks kit that she has for Christmas. And this is it. Oh, sorry about the light, guys. So... Oh... Uh, I don't, I don't know what to do. Let me try to open them out and maybe you'll see like I'll show you some of the colors. So I decided 
Okay, this light is like too much, really. <laughs> this is like not giving me what I want. All right, is that better? I hope so. We got this yellowy color, purpley, speckly, a pink. You got green. Uh, light blues. So darker blues, purpley blues. So yeah, so you kind of get the gist of it. It's a mixture, a mixture of colors, and um, I'm going to uh, make. A pair of pixel rise socks from them so um, that is my plan for a box of socks so hopefully I can get it done before the end of the year <laughs> and we are down to the last whip I went on Instagram sorry not Instagram <laughs> I went on the Ravelry group and I listened to the masses that recorded I'm sorry, that voted for the sweater, the happily sweater, part du. <laughs> du, sorry. Two, dos. I don't know. My French just doesn't really do so well. But anyway. Um, so making a second one, and everyone decided that I should do blue. So I started it. Um, I forgot the color of this one. I forgot the color of this yarn. I'll write it down at the bottom. It's a nitpicks palette uh can't remember the name of it right now but i started so this is i'm working on the waist decreases and i decided that i wanted to do it for um nana Swimo. and remember last podcast i was a little cast on crazy and ko crazy or whatever i have come to my senses um with cooking for thanksgiving and I cooked a lot. I mean, the whole table was like cakes, pies, and then we had people bring pies over, and then the turkey was huge, and then uh, sweet potatoes from here to, I don't know, Atlanta. It was just so much. Um, so I cooked a whole lot. There was no way I could get any knitting in Thanksgiving Eve, Thanksgiving Day, or the day after Thanksgiving, because I had to go to work at eight o'clock in the morning. And then when I got to work, there was work. So uh, yeah, I came home and I crashed. So I got no knitting done. So by Saturday after Thanksgiving, that's when I actually got some energy. And then I was like, I really don't feel like rush knitting. Um, I don't have a, a deadline as Rhinebeck was where I where if I didn't knit the sweater then I had nothing to wear well I mean I had previous sweaters but nothing new to wear so I didn't have that pending pressure and I was just like I I know this is gonna be a great sweater I'm just gonna chill for a minute and the reason being was because I was working on my void shawl and as you can see here it's completed so this is my finished object and it was part of the Melanie Berg Big Bad Berg Along for um, the Down Cellar Studio podcast, as well as a few other podcasts, but I only entered it into the, the Down Cellar Studio Piskin Party podcast knit along. God, God, I'm getting tongue tied. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> so I finished it on November 30th. Like, was it? one o'clock in the morning I was like busy like with this this is edging here um I still have a few ends to weave in I'm not perfect and I don't pretend to be um <laughs> but this is like oh, it's huge I still have to block it but I love it it's in Madeline Tosh Tarte oh it is longer than my wingspan because this is how much is left over after my wingspan. What I did was, because I'm using a DK weight and it was written in a worsted weight, uh, written for worsted weight, what I did is I knit two extra pattern repeats 
to make up for the difference in stitch count. So I calculated to get around 90 inches, I would have to do X amount of extra stitches. So um, each round, each, each repeat increased about 30 stitches. If I did, if I did my math right, so I I went an extra 60 stitches, which was not fun when I was doing the edging, but it's okay. <laughs> so it's done. It's warm. I'm like sweating right now, and my office is really, really, really cold. So I already have an outfit planned for it. Um, stark white shirt with a collar, black pants, red, and um. Just in case you're wondering, the colors, the national colors of Trinidad and Tobago, where my family's from, is red, white, and black. So why not be nationalistic? Um, yeah, I love America too, but you know, sometimes you want to just pay homage to your roots. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so yeah, that's my voice show by Melanie Berg. I love it. Um, and... If anyone is in New York and has a voice show, wants to do a twinsy shot, let's do this. Contact me. Find me on any of the social medias. Message me. Let's do a little, little photo shoot. It'll be fun. Uh, why not? <laughs> Actually, I'm having fun with this. Like, this show is like giving me life right now. Oh, like, I could totally do one of these and then put my hair up. Fuck. <laughs> like I said, let's do a photo shoot. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop being silly right now. I'm really, really, really hot. Um, <laughs> I know I'm being a crazy person right now, but you know, knitting just makes me giddy, what can I say? So, I set out to two trunk shows in one day. The first trunk show was the Vull and Vine trunk show at Do You Knit in Westfield, New Jersey. And I have to let you know that that day I was going crazy. So that was the day that I posted the last podcast and I was busy trying to upload it and get stuff done before I left the house and I, had all intentions of taking a train so I wouldn't have to deal with traffic or whatever. And then I looked at the time and I was like, if I take a train, it's gonna take me two hours to get there. So I was like, okay, I'll just drive because I calculated it was like an hour, 15 minutes drive from my house because I am close to the highway that takes you to the Verrazano that takes you straight over the Gothels Bridge into Manhattan, into, sorry, into um, New Jersey. And it was like, 20 minutes from there, 20 to 30 minutes, but whatever. So here I am cruising along, cruising along. I got to the Verrazano, easy pass, went through without a problem. So I had six miles to go to get to the Gothels Bridge. I was inching, inching, inching for six miles. Like really? What is so like, tragic that we have to inch for six miles and take up 20 minutes of my time when I need to get to see Kristen to buy yarn. Like, really? What's the problem? The problem was, there was a little itty bitty smart car that's not so smart and another car and they crashed at the bridge, like right before you get to the Gothel's Bridge. So it had, it had the traffic extend all the way back for six miles, like Half the time in New York, people are just driving slow because they're looking, because they're nosy and they wanna know what's going on. Like, just keep driving. Like, the police will take care of it. Just keep going, you know? So that really irked me. But anyway, so I'm like freaking out as I'm driving, praying to God. I'm like, please let Yarn Pimp be there. Please let Yarn Pimp be there because that was her new colorway that I wanted and I really, it just looked so nice on Instagram. And I was like, I wanna get some. And last time I went to her trunk show, she sold out in like an hour or hour and a half. So I was like, oh my God, I'm already two hours after it started. Like, it's not gonna be the yard. I'm driving here for no reason. And I was like, okay, well, if I get there and there's no villain vine yarn, at least I can have a plethora of hedgehog fibers to choose from because Karen stocks a lot of hedgehog fibers. She's like, it's like mini Ireland in there. So. <laughs> She stocks a lot of hedgehogs, so I was interested in going to get that as well. Look at 
at these colors. Oh my god. So pretty. He's a little hedgehog. Oh my god. This is like the hedgehog oh, factory in here. Some, somebody hashtagged it last. The eighth wonder of the world. It is. It's the eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> it's hedgehog. <laughs> oh, but first and foremost, I wanted to get my Roll and Ryan yarn. So I show up. And lo and behold, there's yarn on the table. I was like, yay! So I gave Kristen a big hug. I'm like, I'm so happy. So um, I was able to get that. And let me show you what I bought. So, yarn pimp. It's so pretty. So this colorway, um, I mean, it has Stellina in it. It has pinks and my purples that I like. There's a little gold fleck here. There's some teal. I just love it. Um, this is a uh, superwash merino, nylon, and Stellina. 438 yards, 400 meters, two ply sock, sock weight fingering yarn. Um, it's gonna be a sock. I don't know what pattern yet. I don't wanna put too much into it and mess up the color work because I love Kristen's colors because they don't flash and pull it's just like a melange of color and it's just pretty throughout the whole sock so I just want to let the yarn speak for itself so Kristen you did good and I will gladly drive in traffic to get your yarn even though you live a train right away but still <laughs> you're my girl so I gladly support you. Um, the second skein that I got is something that I have wanted for a while. It was Pandora. It's called Pandora. And I'm gonna try to fix this so maybe it's not so oh, bright. Okay. Yeah, it's called Pandora. And this is on the Volca base. Uh, Superwash Merino, Cashmere, and Nylon. So what's the difference between the two? Oh, this has Stelina in it, duh. So yeah, um, I wanted this. It's pink. It's a little black, little black spots, um, little gray spots, and white. I mean, pink is my color, so I have wanted Pandora for so long. I went to the trunk show the last time, and it wasn't there. It was already sold, and I've been trying to get one of her updates, and I've been missing out, so... Finally got it. She had a lot of them actually, so I was really, really, really excited to be able to choose the specific uh, yarn base that I wanted. Um, I also bought a skein for uh, Marsha of One Geek to Craft Them All because she couldn't make it, and I was like, well, you have a friend that cares about you, so I can pick you up one. So I did, I did a good deed. I feel so good. Gave her to her, gave her a big hug, and uh, everybody's happy. <laughs> and I also purchased my hedgehog yarn. Um, so I had made this hat, the Meraki hat, from yarn that I bought in... This is so dark. I'm going to change it again. I'm sorry. I just can't with this... I'll get used to this lighting at some point in life, but right now... Just let me know what you like better because I'm just trying something here. So anyway, um, the Meraki hat, I bought the yarn at Vogue Knitting from uh, Do You Knit and this is the hat. I just have to get, so yeah. It works for fluffy hair and that's what's most important to me because I can wear it when my hair's straight or curly. Um, this is day two of the fluff, so it'll only fluff up even more, but, um, I'm okay with it. I need my pom-pom. It's, I ordered it. It's in a bag somewhere. I just have to sew it on. Um, so to go with this hat, which was made with jelly, this was the jelly part, and this is the genie. I made it with the single ply yarn, so I bought genie sock yarn. Oh, and when I have to show this now, I have to go back down. Okay, I bought Genie and I bought Jelly. Now the only thing is this Jelly is a little darker, but do you think I really care? It's pink. I'm happy, I'm in heaven right now. So what I wanna make with this is a brioche shawl. Uh, why is the name escaping me right now? 
because I'm crazy and I can't remember anything. So I'm gonna put a picture of the Brio shawl right there. And um, I can't believe I can't remember the name of it right now. I have been talking about this shawl all the time. I know Jan, you're probably screaming at the screen right now because you know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna make a shawl. It's gonna be brioche, it's gonna be these two colors and it's gonna go with this hat. And hopefully it'll be done while it's still cold so I can still wear it. I think I'm going to start it in January. So yeah, that is that. And fluff up the hair a bit. So that was the trip to Jersey. So I left Jersey about, mm, I can't remember what time it was, four? Drove back home, had dinner, then went right back outside and went to Woolen for the Indie Untangled Trunk Show. So when I got there, I found some yarn that I didn't think I could get my hands on. It was from the UK um, because shipping from the UK is really expensive, guys. Um, shipping to and from. And I just never thought that I would actually see this in Brooklyn. But I got Mothy and the Squid. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's called Variegated Gradient Rainbow. It's a superwash nylon and stellina. Are you getting this? I'm loving. Ooh, look at that. Wait, let me get out of the way so that you can really see it. Alrighty. Yes. This is going to be exquisite. So. I definitely, um, am I back? Am I focused now? Are we focused? Okay. Um, <laughs> so I definitely want to make some socks with these. And there was another skein that I fell in love with. It is, who is it from? Toil and Trouble. Bookishly inspired from Salem, Massachusetts. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Yeah, me and this lighting, I really apologize. So this is just beautiful. It's oh, pink, purple, splotches of black. This has to become a shawl. One reason being is it's 100% superwash merino wool. So it, there's no nylon in it. So I'm not gonna wear them down like you know walking in a pair of socks. But this is going to make an exquisite shawl. I have no idea what shawl it's going to be. But hey, if you have any recommendations, Send it to the Ravelry group. Let's get a shawl something started or something for the new year. I don't know. I want to do an in along. Um, let's figure something out. What do you, what would you like to do? You know, let's let's get this going. So um, yeah, that was my trip to Woolen for the Indian Tangled Trunk Show. We have arrived at Woolen. for the Indie Untangled Trunk Show.
and I made one more trip to Woolen last Tuesday because I just have a habit of going there on Tuesdays. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and this is staring me in the face from Molly Girl. It's called Baseline. Lollipop is the colorway. And it's fluorescent, y'all. Like, it's black light responsive. And I apologize, I do not have a black light. I know, I suck. Because right now, I could have totally took all this Broadway lights off and put on a black light, and you could have seen how magical this was. And you know what, I promise I will show you the magic in a future episode. I promise, promise, promise. Pinky swear. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yes. I've been eyeing this yarn for a while. Molly Girl had a trunk show at Woolen on Halloween night. I had to work. I had to go into the office on a Saturday. I'm not even gonna get into it. It was just a lot of work that needed to be done. Crazy Excel, Excel spreadsheets. And thank God I have an Excel brain. So I just did it really quickly as well as quickly as I could. But I missed out on a trunk show and I was like really upset about it. And then I was like, okay, I have to rush home, get dressed for the Halloween party. I need a stiff drink. And the drinks were like far away because the bar was like really, really, really packed. And my friend was the bartender, but I couldn't even say hello because he was so far away. It was just horrible. But anyway, all that being said, I missed the Molly Girl trunk show and I've been wanting this ever since. So now I have it and I'm really excited. So this is going to become socks and I don't know, maybe I'll go to a rave and do some handstands or something. I don't know. Show them off. <laughs> I don't know. Where else do you like show off fluorescent yarn? I mean, fluorescent articles of clothing. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll be fun. And knitting is fun. So there you go. <laughs> so do I have any more acquisitions? Um, yes. So during Halloween, Nitty and Color posted some colors online. And I remember I had purchased from them during... Maryland Sheep and Wool last year? Yes, because I made it my business to support indie dyers. So there's this color called Glam Rock Sparkle Sock. Look at that. Oh, wait, let me get out the way. Okay, Canadian color. Uh, I'm gonna mess with this, but anyway. Glam Rock Sparkle Sock. It's sparkly. Yeah. There we go. So these are gonna become a pair of socks. Focus. Okay, so these are gonna become a pair of socks. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't know yet what brand, what uh, pattern or, I don't know, but it's gonna become a pair of socks. I mean, it, there's a lot of black in it, so I might just do a straight, straight um, vanilla socks so that I don't get confused with some patterning and stuff. And I want to see how it stripes. I think the stripes go like halfway through every row. So it'll be like staggered stripes um, based on the picture that I saw. But um, I'm excited. It's made with Superwash, Merino, Nylon, and Stellina, 438 yards. So uh, Ultra Fright at Night is the name of the, the colorway. So I doubt there's any more left. Sorry, I think I bought either the last one or the second to last one. Um, but she also has a set of minis. I don't think that all of the Halloween ones sold out yet. Um, I've been eyeing them. Um, we'll see if they're still there. Um, no, I'm not supposed to buy yarn. Guys, don't make me buy yarn, for real. Um, so, <sighs> I made some travel plans, guys. And I mentioned it a little bit before and I'm gonna say it again now. I'm really excited. I'm going to go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I had said this since last year. Everyone's like, are you going to Trinidad for Carnival? Because Carnival is the beginning of March. 
Ashley Carnival is the week before Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I keep telling my friends, no, I'm going to Scotland. And they're looking at me like, Scotland? What's going on in Scotland? Why are you going to Scotland? Why are you not going to the beach? And why are you not wearing a costume and enjoying your whole cultural experience and your country of your parents' origin? I'm gonna tell you the real deal. Like, for real, for real? Trinidad is expensive. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna tally up my last experience in Carnival. I don't know how I went and still kept the lights on and my mortgage. I was very creative. A little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. You don't really add it up and see like how much it costs, but I basically went on Expedia, checked out accommodations in Edinburgh for a week at a four-star hotel, as well as a flight, and it came up to $1,100. In Trinidad, the flight to Trinidad, if you get a $600 flight, that's good, you're gold. Lodging at the hotel, a week stay, at the Hilton, the year that I went with one of my really good friends, we split the cost, it was 1800. So, hmm, I get a flight and, a, and I get a flight and I go to Scotland and I can probably get into the Edinburgh Yarn Festival for the same amount of money of just staying in the Hilton for seven days and I didn't fly there yet, I didn't eat a thing, I didn't drink a drink, I didn't party, I didn't buy a costume, I didn't even buy a pair of shorts or sandals or a dress yeah tell me which one makes more sense so <laughs> aside from the cost factor I am excited about Edinburgh I saw some pictures from Edinburgh and I've seen some people that I've noticed in the pictures from Instagram like friends people that I follow I have also been listening to the Knit British podcast and Joe and Mika were talking about what their plans were for Edinburgh so that's gotten me excited as well so I have a friend who has a great travel agent and she just basically hooked up the whole package for us and it was a few hundred dollars more than what I originally quoted for myself however I will also be traveling to Dublin so I'm not complaining at all I'm going to two countries in Europe for still less than the cost I would have paid to go to Trinidad so I'm happy. So if anyone is going to Edinburgh, please contact me. Let's meet up. Let's take pictures. Hugs are free. <laughs> if we want to do a twinning shot with the Void Shawl, let me know. Um, I'm all for it. So I'm really excited. And that being said, I have to go on a yarn diet. I don't want to call it a diet because people go on diets and they fail. Like, they go on a diet, oh, in January, I'm gonna go into the gym and this and that. And by February, when it's Valentine's Day, they're eating a whole box of chocolates. Like, no, I'm not calling it a yarn diet. I'm gonna call it a yarn purchase hiatus. So, I'm going to refrain from buying yarn. And to make things even more concrete, what I'm going to do is, you know, I still like to support my my fellow artisans, my fellow yarn dyers and such. So I'll still go on your Instagram and check out your page because it, it's my Instagram is flooded with yarn anyway. That's what gets me into trouble. Um, but what I plan on doing is whenever I see something I really, really, really want, let's say I see sparkly striped yarn for 30 bucks. If a week passes and I still want it, I'm gonna take that $30 and I'm gonna put it away in an account. And I'm gonna keep doing that. And that will be my yarn buying money when I get to Edinburgh. That being said, I have plans to pack an extra bag to bring home yarn. I don't need a lot of clothes for eight days. Seriously, a few sweaters, leggings, wellies, I've been told, or some form of boots. Um, 
and I'll probably travel with a pair of sneakers because they're easier to take on and off when you're going through, you know, the airline and stuff, the uh, TSA or whatever the equivalent is in another country for TSA. But, um, yeah, who needs a ton of clothes? Like, <laughs> I want yarn! <laughs> so, um, I think I have thought of the best way possible for me to make this happen. I don't want to get there and be like, Oh man, I shouldn't have bought XYZ yarn because now I have no money to buy whatever this fancy yarn that I can only get in the UK is. So I'm going to try to be my best on my best behavior to be frugal. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to have the famine before you have the feast. <laughs> so I'll just pretend it's a famine. And then I'll feast on yarn when I get there. <laughs> so that is the plan. <sighs> so exciting. And yeah, like I said, hit me up. Give me a call. Give me a shout out. Give me an email. Um, let's take a lot of pictures. Let's have fun. Let's do handstands. I can't do a handstand, but we'll, we'll, we'll try. <laughs> So one last thing that I'd like to mention about my trip to Do You Knit, how could I forget this? Okay, so yeah, I'm starting to have a project bag obsession. <laughs> so I feel like every time I have a podcast now, I've been showing you a new project bag. Yeah, um, it might be a habit. We'll see. <laughs> so while I was at Do You Knit, uh, the lovely ladies of Toad Hollow Bags were there. Uh, their names are Her Helen and Mary Beth Graham. Hi ladies! Um, I uh, exchange information with them so I'm going to be checking out their podcast. They're going to check out mine and it's a lovely knitting community. I love it! So they had this bag. Well they had, a, they had tons of bags but this one stuck out to me the, the most. Yeah, because that's basically, yeah, because knitting is a calming zen thing for me and it makes me not be upset. <laughs> I think it does that for a lot of people, seriously. So um, I just wanted to mention their, uh, their shop, Toad Hollow. Uh, me and this focus thing, I'm so sorry. Here we go. Yeah, so I will definitely focus. Thank you. I will definitely leave a link uh, to their Etsy shop. Is it Etsy? The Etsy shop, their website, their Gmail, something. I will definitely leave a link for them. Um, the bag is very sturdy. It stands up on its own. As you can see, standing up on one hand. Um, it stands up on its own and I like the construction of the bag and you can fit a lot in here like let's see how much games we can get in here like that's one two three can we get a fourth one in there yeah so like you can get four skeins in here so if you're doing like a three color cashmere cowl or like one of the Stephen West mystery knit along cowl um, shawls or anything that takes four skeins of yarn definitely get this bag so Toad Hollow Road I am loving this so yeah there you go so oh, I have a bunch of thank yous that I would like to say to a bunch of uh, my Ravelry friends and Instagram friends. Um, it all started when I, something's in my eye, sorry. <laughs> it all started when I went to the NaNoSumo group and I saw someone making a beautiful sweater by the name of Title Ground and I put that on my little wish list, not thinking anything of it, just figured, you know, you know, later on I'll get it or whatever. And then like the next day, Selma from Two Tangle Skeins, uh, she gifted it to me. And I was like in shock, like, oh wow, this is so cool. Like, thank you, Selma. So after that happened, I thought about um, 
the whole get your wishes granted thing that happened last year. And then lo and behold, a few days later, it started on Instagram. So I decided to put my wish out there. I had wanted a yarn bowl. Um, and no one really responded, but it's okay. I know yarn bowls are not cheap, so, but it is a wish, so I figured I'd put it out there, why the heck not? And then I said, okay, let me be a little bit more um, price conscious with my wish. Um, I knew that there were a lot of patterns that I really, really liked on Ravelry, and I saw that a lot of people were transferring patterns and stuff, so I was like, hmm, let me just put some patterns and see, you know, put it out there and see what happens. So I did and I got six patterns. There were six beautiful people out there in this knitting world that wanted to just do something really sweet and gift me something. And I feel so honored and happy that they felt in such a, they felt like giving in such a good generous manner. So I just want to thank them. So um, the first person is, uh, her name is Angeline, and I'm trying to remember the name of this. I can't write for whatever reason. Her name is Angeline, and she uh, gifted me the Sizzle Pop shawl, um, which is the Brio shawl that I was talking about earlier that I couldn't remember the name of. Um, the designer of the Sizzle Pop shawl is uh, Nick Graffiti, also known as Leslie Ann Robinson. So thank you so much, Angeline. Uh, the next person that gifted me something is Eileen D and she gifted me Windsheafed by Stephen West. I intend to make that hat for a special person of the male persuasion in my life. Um, if he could pick out a yarn. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. <laughs> so then the next the next uh, pattern that I received is the Excuse Me Poncho by Stephen West again. I'm starting to really love Stephen West. Um, this was gifted to me by Verena Knit Live, Knit Live Love, my friend from Germany. Um, and after that, I also received from Amber Leilania the Tapestry Cow by Minty Fresh also known as Pepper Knit. She's one of my friends in New York and she has uh, created that pattern eons ago and I've always liked it. Always wanted to do, to do double knit and now I have it. So I'm very happy. Thank you so much, Amber. And the other pattern that I received, two more guys. So one of them is called uh, Ryan Lust by Melanie Berg. Um, that was gifted to me by E. Gonzalez, also known as Elisa. She's actually um, ordered some stitch markers for me in the past and we share a love of a specific mug that I'm using uh, if you see on Instagram with all my David's teas I have this mug we have the same mug um, we just like the same things I guess um, thank you so much Elisa and last but not least Diana um, who is Dcat on Ravelry she gifted me the excuse me shawl and I'm just very happy to have received everything from you wonderful ladies. Thank you so much. So what I did as my uh, response to this overwhelming generosity is to create uh, sets of stitch markers to give to people. Um, I put it out there, who wants a stitch marker um, set? And I created a Christmas set that I gifted to a few people, um, I can't remember the names right now, <laughs> but if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see, you'll start to see um, a few of them received their packages today and sent me thank yous and you are most very, very welcome. Uh, so I'm inserting a picture of what that is right here. So I made a few um, sets and sent it on and I also created a different set with similar stitch markers um, similar charms um, in my Etsy shop so it's actually live right now you can go purchase if you feel so obliged and um, enjoy your holiday or get ready you know get those gifts those stocking stuffers going or however you choose to gift your uh, 
giftables too. So um, once again, get your wishes granted. Thank you so much for all your generosity. And I feel so good to have given a part of me to people all over the United States who have received gifts. And I'm so happy to be able to make you happy. Thank you so much. I'm excited for the holidays. I am interested in decorating this house, but I have to go in the basement to pull out the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree takes about three days because there's just so many ornaments and it's a lot of work, but it's like mini Rockefeller Center in this place. <laughs> so um, hopefully by the next podcast, I can show you uh, what it's all about. And I'm trying to think, I feel, I keep feeling like I'm forgetting something and I just can't quite put my finger on it. So, I don't know. Well, since I can't think of anything else that I can say at the moment, I want to say thank you for checking out my podcast. Please like, subscribe, share, um, comment. Um, I really enjoy doing this. I enjoy sharing my knitting life with you all and I appreciate uh, you coming in and checking me out. I appreciate the feedback, um, especially the one about the lighting. I hope that I've fixed some of those issues with you. I know you can't see over here too much, but the main thing was that um, the person who made the comment said that they couldn't see the details of my project, but I think you can see the details of this right now. So um, hopefully I hit that on the mark. Um, I'll still be working on it to see if I can get better at it. Um, so yeah, thank you for checking me out and have a happy knitting. And um, like I always say, embellish your knitting, embellish your life. Take care guys. Yay. I feel like singing. Fall down on your knees. Oh, hear the angels' voices. Who oh, night divine. Christ was born.